Um, this is a map of the city, and that's the Holcomb Bridge Outer Peachtree Corner Circle uh, study area. And as you can see, um, that's about 1,100 acres. A little bit of trivia. Uh, 10,520 acres. Somebody ever ask you how big is the city? We are the biggest city population and land mass in Gwinnett County. Uh, but that's that's where that's uh, that's where the study area is for Holcomb Bridge Road. Um, here it is on an up close. That's Holcomb Bridge Road. That's what we call Outer Peachtree Corner Circle. As you can see, this is uh, uh, 141. Uh, Jimmy Carter Boulevard picks up right here. This is Spalding. Okay, everybody kind of oriented. When we did it, the study, those were the recommendations, the, the emerging themes that came out of it. And they were, uh, we need to create a sense of place for the area, because right now, there is no sense of what's there except apartments. Let me just stop right there. It used to be the way land use worked, that a long time ago, you put your apartments over here, you put your single family here, you put your commercial here. That's good in some regards, but for a commercial corridor like a downtown area, that's the reason you put people want to live, work, and play in that area. Single family will always be, stay in there, and the city knows it and will protect it. However, over there in the apartment area, the, the, we need more than apartments. Well, here, strip center, retail repair and recovery. I think everybody knows that. As you drive through that car, what do you see? Empty, you know, vacant. Vacancy rates aren't as bad there as you might think. They, they're pretty rented up and the rents are good. But there's a lot of them that, to be honest, are just run down and they need repair and recovery. Infill housing, there's too much of one kind of housing. Apartments, it needs to be an opportunity for senior, townhome, retail, condo, a rental condo, those things. Um, neighborhood centers with mixed use elements. When you put all this apartment there, if someone's got to go somewhere to pick something up, they have to drive a lot further than we do from our house right down to Ingalls. Um, this is probably the most important one, creating an economic and regulatory toolkit. And that's things that the city can do. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Matter of fact, tomorrow night um, at our city council meeting, we'll have the first presentation on this subject from Bleakley and Associates about renovating aging um, townhomes, uh, excuse me, apartments and uh, buildings on um, Holcomb Bridge Road. But there's a whole host of things that we could, and see that greenways and trails and open space greenways. Uh, as you probably have noticed, Beach Corner is kind of hot right now. I mean, it's it's going very well. Things are things are good, um, and so we are being asked more regularly to do investor presentations. And so the city staff does investor presentations, and when they do them, Diana Wheeler, our community development director, always says, yeah, what about the Holcomb Bridge area? Are you interested in investing there? Well, maybe, you know, incentives, and we talk about that, and that's, we'll get to that in a minute. But then we always ask, what is the one thing the city could do to encourage you to invest in our city? It is absolutely, According to Diana, the first words out of their mouths every time. Finish that multi-use trail you keep talking about, especially on that side of town. Because, oh well, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, everybody can read that. Let's talk about, that. this is a gorilla in the room. And I can talk about redevelopment all I want to. But everybody knows me because I've been talking to you about these issues for many, many years. And that is an issue, crime in the apartments. And let's just all read it together. Overall crime incidents that are tracked by the police are low in Peachtree Corners. I would dare say that the neighborhoods that we all live in has low crime rates. Uh, 0.25 incidents per resident. However, in the sample apartment complexes, the incidence of crime is almost 50% higher at 0.37 per residence. There are 14 in this sample, 14 apartment complexes. Three, Highland Corners, Valencia Park, and Silver Oaks account for this higher rate with crime the remaining 11 more modest levels. What do those three have in common? They're the oldest. There's nothing wrong with apartments. There's something wrong with old apartments. And that's why what we're trying to do is create an incentive to, to replace the old apartments. Everybody know where Highland Corners is? Cross, you know where uh, P 
Peachtree Corner Circle crosses Holcomb Bridge Road, look to your right, right there. That, that is like 300 units, 80% of them, I think, are three bedroom. They don't make three bedroom apartments anymore. They don't make them. They make one and two bedrooms. The, uh, the millennial housing we're putting in Tech Park is two thirds one bedroom and one third two bedrooms. It, they just don't make it like that anymore. But um, that one right there, the Lindsay Parkson one, let's just put it the way. The only violent crime, I won't give you any more anecdotal stuff. You've, you've seen, you watch TV and you know what you see about violence and the only violent crime and the only murders we have had so far are in that area. When those, and actually those two. So that is another, we're targeting the older apartments and we hope to improve upon that as well. And while I'm at it, um, the other thing we're doing right now uh, that I don't have here, but I want to mention is, um, do you remember David Martinez, the multifamily crime-free prevention guy, his wife got, yeah. They've replaced him with uh, Bert Garcia. And Bert is doing a great job of picking up where David left off. They had another training session uh, at, we always volunteer City Hall, we buy them lunch, we'll do anything we can to encourage them to do these programs in, um, in Peace Street Corners for our apartment complexes here. I was talking to Major Fitzgerald, who has the Southwest Command for our area, about their current results, and he said, in the areas that have had this program longer than you, they have seen a 50%, 5-0, 50% reduction in robberies. And that's the kind of thing we want to see. Oh, yeah. And that's the kind of thing we want to see and to, uh, to stay on top of. OK. Um, oops, sorry. I clicked too many times. That, OK, that's, uh, remember what I said about walking trails and bike paths and improving the general area? Uh, see this concrete here? That is serving no useful purpose as you look from, your back is toward Holcomb Bridge and you're looking toward PIB, OK? So why can't you do that? And then move it to the right and put that kind of thing in there. That's, that's what the development community said. Somebody's got to go first, and it generally is a city. So if we have a policy that we address these issues first, at the same time we offer incentives for redevelopment, we believe that'll be successful. This is a view of Crooked Creek uh, running parallel to Holcomb Bridge, and as it could look um, as a multi-use trail. Now, just so you know, when we put this out and the mayor of Dunwoody, you know, within days after we had this as a city council meeting, Mayor of Dunwoody calls me and he said, man, we would love to hook up with you. Sandy Springs said the same thing. They contacted us and said, <clears throat> we would love to connect our walking trails, bike paths with yours all the way. And, and Friday morning. Um, Lynette Howard was at the uh, Peach Corner Business Association when I did the State of the City there. And she said the goal, and she spoke for the county, she said our goal is to be able to go, when, when you finish yours, Mike, you know, there in the city of Peach Street Corners, you can go all the way from Perimeter Mall to the Mall of Georgia, either walking or on a bike path. And, and that's something that you'll find that young people and a lot of older people, I mean, I got friends that are older than me, who, that's what they do all weekend long. I see smiles back there, Howard. Howard, are you a walker? All right. Um, that's one of my favorite, uh, gets under my skin. I mean, that's, um, everybody know where that is? That's the Outback Shopping Center, where Little Izzy is was. That's what it looks like now. This is a rendering. We don't have anybody that's proposed that, but that's the kind of thing we look. To me, that is a very important commercial corridor right there at the intersection of Spalding and Holcomb Bridge Road. So what you want to do is encourage that redevelopment there. So that's, that's what we're, that's why that's a, that's a good rendering, we think. So the next steps in that area, uh, issue a policy on redevelopment incentives for the aging commercial properties on Holcomb Bridge, develop the multi-use trails along Peachtree Corners, and coordinate with surrounding cities. And it starts Tuesday night, so I invite you all to come over tomorrow night and hear what we've got to say. Um, two councilmen are already on a subcommittee that will be working on them. One of them is Phil Sod. Phil's in post one. Eric Chris, the new councilman, is going to be on it also because that's all in post one and post two. And they'll both be working with me and community development director and the consultants to come up with uh, the redevelopment incentives to present to the, uh, to the council. 
Transportation, so that's the update on Holcomb Bridge Road and Outer Peachtree Corner Circle. Um, transportation. Here, um, here's the current projects that we have, and I know you can't read those because they're too small, so let me just kind of walk up. Winter's Chapel, we've done those sidewalks. You know, and that's something that when you think about that part of the city and trying to make it accessible so people can walk and beautifying it, that, that was a big improvement up there. Pavement condition analysis. I can't tell you the number of times I get emails from folks saying, would you pave the street in front of my house? And I go, <clears throat> well, let me tell you how that works. So what we did was we hired a company, this, and I love this, the state of the art is it's a big uh, vehicle that has a, a laser device that goes around and drives around on all the streets that are our streets to maintain, and it measures their depth and then it grades them. And the scoring is a universal, you know, I guess the guys who pave streets have a universal code. If it's, if it's below 71, it needs to be paved. What you try to do is keep it above 71 because if you let it get too worn down, it's very expensive. You gotta replace it. That's the reason you see the guys out there patching holes real quick because you don't want that. That's one of the first things we did so we can have a scientific basis for paving the streets. And the city had a lot of streets that just had been neglected a lot of years. Um, Holcomb Bridge, Jimmy Carter, that's Technology Park sidewalks, we've completed that. This is the single most important project right there that we have, that was our first SPLOS project that we wanted. State Road 141 at Peachtree Industrial Boulevard coming summer of 2016. Does anybody know what that is? Uh, all the way from the Forsyth County border to DeKalb County, 141 goes up there. And the, what's the biggest bottleneck in the whole place? It's where 141 narrows to one lane before it goes up onto PIB. I see everybody, a lot of heads going up and down. The very first thing we said was, when we were eligible for splotch, which, splotch, which was like two years ago, uh, we said, we want to widen that. So GDOT and the county said, they're not used to cities saying, we'll work with you. So they, they quickly said, sure. So they bumped it to ahead of the list. GDOT does not move fast at all. Uh, and so that project, I think they're opening the bids August 4th. So that will be, they'll start that and uh, do that one pretty quick. A Winter's Chapel traffic study, we finished that. They're already looking at the recommendation. This is roundabout Peachtree Corner Circle at Medlock Bridge. Has anybody taken Peachtree Corner Circle uh, when it comes into Medlock Bridge? Try to try to take a left or a right, you ask him. Uh, we had some Georgia Tech interns in doing just, you know, free projects, and they took one look at it, and they studied all the intersections, and they said, wow, you know, had you ever thought of doing a roundabout? Young minds, uh, I love it. So we said, you know, really, we hadn't. So that is being looked at. We'll have the study, I think this fall, we'll have uh, the design is underway, and we'll, we'll get that to be able to show and tell everybody how that's gonna work. Sidewalks, um, a Winter's Chapel at Spalding. Street resurfacing is ongoing. Um, Spalding Drive to Winter's Chapel at River Exchange. That is a big county project that we're helping with. Beaver Highway, Crooked Creek sidewalks. I was talking to somebody earlier who keeps asking me about Crooked Creek sidewalks. There they are. Uh, and we will, we've finished those. You can see them if you drive in that area. You can see it in phase two's coming. Sidewalks at Spalding and Jaybird Alley, that's coming. Technology Park sidewalks, we finished. This is a very important study, State Road 141 corridor study. It's like I said, uh, 141 is the most important transportation corridor between 285 and 400. I mean, it is gonna, GDOT told us in 2050 they expect it to be, how many lanes? Somebody say guess. Eight, that's what they're telling us now. We'll, some of you, you look young enough that you'll be here to argue about it, but I, you know, I, <laughs> I'll do what I can, guys. Uh, but it's one of those things where that is, uh, that's, that's the way they view it. It's a very car-centric uh, area. So they want us to, and Peachtree Corners, I mean, Johns Creek's been a city longer than us, so they're bugging us because all their citizens come in, remember? So they said, participate with it. So GDOT gave us a study, a grant. They actually gave us the money. We hired the same consultant Johns Creek did. So between Johns Creek and us, we're everything from the Forsyth line to the DeKalb line. So that's a lot of space 
that we will sync the lights and make sure everything moves as rapidly as we can to move that along. Because the more we do that, the longer we can put off the inevitable widening. Everybody understood? That's, that's why I brought it up that way. So if we can keep it moving, don't slow it down, then uh, that helps. Comprehensive transportation plan, that's the, as I said, the bookend piece to the comprehensive land use plan. 20 year view, I'll be talking about that in a minute. Um, um, I was gonna say, get ready because I'm gonna show you the most congested intersection in the city. Everybody know where that is? Well, I, yeah, I'm sorry, down in here. Uh, it is, uh, that is the slip ramp, that's CVS, uh, that's uh, Piedmont Bank, Ingalls, kind of fill it in there. That's what that is. That's the one that, uh, that has the most congestion and people get, and it's because, if you look at it, Bush Road comes up and brings a lot of people, a lot of people live in here. They come up and they come here, and a lot of people come from those subdivisions that live up here. And so that, that just needs a lot of relief. We've looked at a number of very creative solutions, and I'm sure we'll be discussing them in a comprehensive transportation plan. What's next? Anybody recognize that one? Spalding, 141, Bank of America. Okay, uh, it's the left turn here. That's the thing they tell us, is that when people are coming down this way, they want to turn left onto 141. Right is not a problem. And here, it's the left turns going this way. Right is not a problem. Left turns on Spalding are the biggest issue uh, for that intersection. Uh, they're talking about something called a Michigan U? Michigan, it, it, there's a term. I see some heads nod transportation guys in the room. Um, what about this one? Picture corner circle, picture corner circle. Quick trip, there, this is Jay Alexander's quick trip. Picture corner circle, that's the third worst. And that's how many lanes do they have dedicated to left turns here? And it's still the next most congested. <laughs> well, th those are the options. I mean, there was one that was put some kind of barrier so people couldn't come out of here and do this, and I'm sure they'll thrash that out. Um, comprehensive transportation plan. It's 20 year view recommendations for intersections, widening sidewalks, the whole thing. Public involvement is, uh, will be solicited. August 11th, six to eight at City Hall. So I'd encourage you all to come. Uh, green space. This is my last update area. And that is something that, uh, and here's where I usually make the point about level three communications. That's the reason I said I'm getting it out of sync. But when they said trees, and the guy's from Colorado, and he just turns and he looks at me, and he said trees, and you got plenty of them out here. That's the reason we bought, we're staying here. Um, and he said, and we loved your walking trails and the fact that you're, I mean, he knew our city. I mean, it wasn't Chamber of Commerce telling him either. He had, they had done their due diligence. They knew what we were trying to do, the vision of connectivity we're trying to have. So we try to do this because, let's face it, um, we're gonna urbanize. See those population numbers? Remember 40,900? What was it in 2012? 38,000. And what were the jobs? 36,000. What are they now? 40,000. So we have a lot, oh yeah. People wanna come to Peachtree Corners. Ask a realtor about supply of uh, houses on the market. They'll say supply's getting tight. Build more houses, Mike, we could sell them. I just laugh, you know. You know, find a space to put the house. You have to do it thoughtfully. You know, we're not a boom town. We've, we're in that phase where, you know, we're kind of now able to decide where we want to put things and have to be real thoughtful about infill and, you know, those kinds of issues. Um, but the, the things we've done, uh, this year we were awarded the Atlanta Regional Commission's Green Community Certification. We have a green committee uh, with the city that are volunteers and they did all the legwork on that. Awarded a Tree City USA designation. We held our first Arbor Day. We developed plans for a botanical garden at Town Center and we assisted with the acquisition of Simpsonwood Park. I will say this, Credit where credit's due, you know, we put two million in it, but the county came up with 14, so I'm never gonna say um, without us it would not have happened. 14's a bigger number than two. Um, I will tell you that they told us, if you don't give us any money, we're gonna take the developers. So that's one of those things that um, we're proud of that. We're proud of that. And you'd have never done it if we hadn't had a city here. That's, that's something that we all, and we were told and, and we really believe that.